Dickie, you have um, an interesting resume. You work as an investment professional, but you also run an online writing course where you help people be better writers on the internet. How did you get started doing that? Yeah, the, you know, my story of writing online came all the way back in the start of 2020. So I'd been reading all these books and listening to podcasts and all these things and kind of thought, I have all this information. It's not going anywhere. It's kind of just being stored in the back of a notebook somewhere. And all I wanted to do was start sharing it. So I started a newsletter that basically summarized all the podcasts and books and whatever articles I'd read that week. And so that was the beginning of 2020. And I did that for about, I'm still doing it today, but uh, throughout the whole year. And I found just the number of opportunities and friendships and just fun I had doing it uh, was something I wanted to help other people do as well. And so there's a bunch of different steps that got to where we are now, but it was really just the positive experience I had and getting other people to do that uh, is something I feel good about. Yeah, it's interesting. How, how big is this now? Like, what are the metrics you can give me? Um, so we have about 1200 students have taken ship 30 for 30, uh, in the past. So that's blew my expectations away for sure. When I originally kind of had the idea, but what's cool about it is it doesn't, it scales pretty well in terms of how many people could do it. I think a thousand or 10,000 could do it at once really, because it's a 30 day writing challenge at the end of the day. Um, there's more to it now than it originally was just a 30 day writing challenge. Now there's kind of more to it, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely been faster growth than I ever thought. And which is pretty cool to look back on as we kind of lap the one year point, uh, coming up soon. That's so cool. Can you explain the 30 day writing challenge? How did that come together? What does that do? How does that work? Yeah. So the, uh, the original thing up for it was, you know, I wanted to start writing every day. I'd been publishing a weekly newsletter for a while and I wanted to start doing it every day. But so I, I tried and I went about seven days on my own trying to do it. And then I realized that there was no way I was going to be able to stick to that on my own. So I went on Twitter and just said, hey, is there anyone who wants to do this with me? Kind of have some, you know, public accountability, et cetera. And the, it was overwhelming response. Like the number of people who were like, yes, I've, I've been, I've been looking to do this forever. And so it was a, it kind of emerged organically out of solving my own problem. And then the, the 30 day part was just, you know, long enough to form a habit, do it consistently, feel pretty good about how we went about just building the habit. And the results kind of spoke for themselves. You, you work through so many ideas during that time that you get a lot of clarity for things you're interested in, things you maybe assume you're interested in, but are really weren't because after six days you just kind of run out of things to write about so it's a pretty cool kind of personal exercise on top of getting to meet a bunch of other friends and have fun doing it too right so this is a and i i, I am actually taking this course right now because to, to kind of experience it um so this is you're having people write these uh short 250 word essays each day um what 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 went into the parameters like setting those types of parameters yeah our one of our core concepts is that creativity thrives with constraints and so i think write every day is very difficult but write every day a 250 word essay in an hour or less is a lot easier and more manageable so we really i think one of the biggest things that holds people back from writing online is how many choices they have to make, what platform do I use, how long, when should I post, all that. And so we try to just give them this playground with very tight rules and say, now go focus on the writing, which you can do if your mind wasn't occupied making all these other decisions. And what we find is just that, that constraint unlocks so much creativity because they don't have to think about all that. They just sit down and it's like, oh, I could operate right in here. And, uh, and so that emerged really just from what I thought was manageable for myself on a 30 day basis. And then that has stuck really for the last eight months. It looks like a lot of the target audience are aspiring business writers or maybe self-help. Um, is that a good characterization or what other types of 
writing have you seen? It's it's really wide. I, I wish I could show you the chart and maybe we can include it, but the number of topics is everything. So every fiction, creativity, self-improvement, business, everything. And outside of that, the number of perspectives, we have every single time zone represented, which is to me, the coolest part of doing anything on the internet is how global it is, right? You have, so I'm hosting a call at, you know, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'm realizing that's 2 a.m. in every, all these other countries, and it's actually kind of the harder part to manage, but uh, yeah, it, it's just such a rich, diverse group, which has been the coolest part of doing it. That's amazing. Have there been any content creation or, or writing careers launched by this? Oh, the not, I mean, we're right at that inflection point now where we've had people who have done it multiple times who are launching their own products and businesses and really starting to accelerate. And because it's only really six, seven months old and it improves so much every time we do it. So we're, I think in one or two years, it's going to be pretty cool to look back and say, wow, look at all these people who have audiences in their own business and they started with ship 30. So it's kind of like an angel investment in a lot of these writers in a way of they're going to be able to tell other people in the future, this is where you should get started because this is how I did it as well. Fascinating. Yeah. I've noticed that you guys do have a lot of good tips in your, uh, your sessions and so on throughout the process. There's also some uh, kind of philosophical, I don't know if attacking is the right word, but talking about legacy writing and, and kind of explaining it as sort of the, the past, mm -hmm. whereas more content creation, the way you do it is the future. Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, it's really just understanding that writing on the internet has a completely different set of rules than what people are used to. And I think the way it's taught in schools is still so much in that old legacy way that you have to have an idea and then you retreat into the woods for 18 months, hopefully with no internet and write about your idea and then emerge with this masterpiece. But now what the internet enables you is to get rapid fire feedback on potential ideas to write about. So you don't have to wait for this giant epiphany. You can test a lot of small things and then double down on what's working. So it's kind of a data-driven approach to, I go out and think, I want to write about 10 different things. I'm going to go write small, make small bets on all of them, see what happens, and then double down on the ones that you know resonate. So it's just a different approach. I think there's, there's more tactical stuff of recognizing that when you're reading something on the internet, you're not competing with other writers or other books. You're competing with Netflix and TikTok. So you have to keep attention. You have to be concise. You have to use headlines. And, and so there's, there's format and content. And then there's so many different rules that I just don't think people are playing or understand well enough uh, to play the game well. That's very cool. Who else does this ship 30 for 30 thing with you? Like who else runs it? So I have a partner, Nicholas Cole, who's been writing. He's just a master of online writing. A lot of the things we preach were, are, are his frameworks. He's been writing online since 2014. He's like a top writer on Quora, Medium, everywhere. Understands this game better than anyone else. So all the live sessions are co-hosted by us. We're, we're partners in the business and just, it's kind of a mix of my habit building and understanding that I solved this problem for myself really a year ago a little under. And then with him, it's here's everything, my 10 years of knowledge dispersed into a, a four or five week course. So it's a nice little partnership. Cool. Yeah, I've also noticed an interesting aspect of the program is it helps you generate an audience, you get a supportive audience, people who want to, you know, look at your stuff, see what you're doing. Um, and that is nice on the internet, because we see so much negativity on the internet. Um, is that, uh, was that an intended part of the program or did that just evolve organically? Yeah, the, one of the things we hear all the time is I came for the writing but stayed for the community. And it's true because on the internet, you can feel writing online can be a lonely endeavor it can feel, especially if you're publishing on your own blog and you hit publish and it just, you hear the crickets of indifference from the internet, right? But what Ship30 does is enables you with that feedback from other people and you get to make friendships along the way and it just creates a more immersive rich rewarding experience versus you know i'm 
uh, slaving away over a hot keyboard to publish a blog post that no one ends up reading and then I'm frustrated and then I quit, right? So it's all of these, it's really just a lot of habit building science kind of packed together into a course that gets you to write. Yeah, that's cool. And did you have, um, you, you have a pretty good Twitter following now. Um, did, how many did you have before you started Ship 30 for 30 compared to now? The original idea for it was in a, November of last year and I had a little over a thousand followers. So I had a small following from just writing um, podcast summaries and sharing some ideas here and there, but really it, it's been kind of a step. Ship 30 has grown as I've grown and <laughs> which has been pretty cool. That is very cool. So how, how, but how many followers do you have now exactly? I think I just 50, 50,000, 51,000. Yeah. That's probably good proof of concept, I would think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Popularity. Uh, how much do you think this will grow? Where do you want to take this? I don't know. It's been really fun to do. And it's one of those things that you kind of, the last seven months have been such a blur that I'm, I'm getting some time to step back. And I mean, we haven't taken up more than two weeks off between a cohort yeah now we're gonna do three weeks this time so it's like i get that extra week to think and look i think a million people could take ship 30 right the number of people who should be riding online is massive there's so much knowledge out there and so if it got to a million people how cool would that be but i don't know how big it could get there's tons of ideas i'm having a blast doing it so i'm not in any rush to scale or i'm really just kind of letting things go organically and have fun along the way.